Do you want to become a better fingerstyle guitarist? Are you frustrated about feeling stuck and you need that extra something to be able to move forward? Here's my top five fingerstyle exercises that I'll promise you will make you a better fingerstyle guitarist. These exercises are not rated in any particular order. So you want to make sure that you watch the whole video, since all five exercises serve their own purpose. Before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell as well, to be notified next time I upload a new video. In today's lesson, we're going to improve the following vital skills in our hands, which is dexterity, endurance and independence. These all comes down to one term that is essential for fingerstyle, which is freedom. As long as you have 100% control of each of your 10 fingers, only your imagination set the barrier of what you're capable of doing. As you might have noticed already, you can see that I'm using a thumb pick today. Now, if you don't use a thumb pick, that's totally fine. You can still do these exercises. All right, let's get started. One of the most, if not the most important thing in fingerstyle guitar is to have an independent thumb. This is my favorite thumb exercise that'll help you build that independence you're looking for, as well as building strength in your thumb. So now I'll introduce you to a technique called the boom chick. And this is what it looks like. So the whole idea about boom chick is that your thumb is pretty much imitating a honky tonk piano, you know, boom, 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 boom. But it's your thumb doing all the work. Now I'm going to break down to you what I'm doing. The first note that you're picking should always be the root of the chord that you're playing. Now I'm holding a C chord in my left hand, which means the root of that chord is the C note. So this is where we start out. It's a good idea if you've never done this before that you put the rest of your hand flat down on the surface of the guitar. So here we go. Five, four, six, four. Five, four, six, four. Five, four, six, four. It might look easy, but if you've never done this before, it can actually be quite tricky. Once you get it down, you'll be able to speed it up a little bit. As you can hear, I'm muting the top strings with my palm right here. Now, you don't have to do this. In fact, actually, if you could do it both with palm muting and without palm muting, that'll be great. Then you'll get that exercise down as well. So this time, let's try an E chord where the root is different than a C chord. So in an E chord, the root is down here. This is the E. So we start on the six this time. So six, four, five, four. Six, four, five, four. The tricky part here is that when you're going from one chord to another, where the location of the root note is different. Let me demonstrate. So we start with the C chord here, where the root is at the fifth string. Now we'll have to go to the E, where the root is at the sixth string. Now I want you to look very closely when I change the chord. So we go five, four, six, four, five, four, six, four, six, four, five, four, six, four, five, four, five, four, six, four. And that just goes on and on. Now, once you get that part down, you can start to add chords every time you hit the root, just like this. Once you get that down, you can start to add a little bit of accent to the chord. You 
can use this exercise with every set of chords that you want. There's a lot of fun exercises you can do once you get this technique down. Here's one of them that I like to play around with. Flexible fingers. This exercise were taught to me by Tommy Emanuel. And the purpose here is to stretch out your muscles in your hands and your joints. So you'll finally be able to do those complicated chords that requires big stretches across the fretboard. It might hurt a bit in the beginning, but life hurts sometimes. So what we're doing with our right hand here is actually not that important. Here we're gonna focus on the left hand. So what we'll have to do is to grab the E string with our thumb. Right now I'm at the seventh fret. And then you wanna go for this chord shape. Put the thumb on. The exercise here is to see how many frets you can move this shape. So. about how far I can go. The whole idea here is to go on as long as you can. And you just keep going until your left hand feels like it's on fire. I always like to do this when I warm up just before a concert because it really stretches out my muscles in my hands. All right, let's try something a bit more challenging. This is a technique that I developed last year when I was fiddling around on my guitar, trying to find a mood for a new song I was writing. I call it the swiping technique. Notice that I'm not saying sweeping, but swiping. So the song I was writing was actually my song D-Day. Now the reason why this technique is a bit tricky is that the picking pattern actually goes against what you think that you're hearing. And this is why it's a great exercise. All right, let me just play something for you so you can hear how it sounds. Now, it might sound simple, but it's actually more tricky than you think. So now I want you to play real close attention to my right hand. Notice how my fingers goes like this. This is why I call it the swiping technique, because it's like you're, you're, you're swiping the strings. Now what's really important when you're learning this technique is that the chord that you're choosing on your left hand has got to be a chord where you can do a hammer on. And I'm gonna show you why. So let's break it down. Start out like this. I'm just gonna slow it down really, because it's, it's, this one is kind of hard to explain. So what I'm gonna do is just to play it really, really slowly. speed again and you can mute the string to make it extra tight and sound extra groovy now as I strike the strings on my way down I also try to get a bit of I try to hit the bridge a little bit to get a little bit of boom as I go down so have fun with this exercise I promise you once you get it down it's gonna open a lot of doors Today, fingerstyle guitar is a lot different than it was just 15 years ago. It has become more popular than ever to use your guitar as a percussive instrument and then incorporate that into your playing. Now, I'm not the biggest user of these percussion techniques, but there is one that I like to use from time to time. It's created by the great Kotaro Shio, and it's called Nail Attack. It's actually quite challenging to get it down, but trust me, once you get it down, it will escalate your playing to a whole new level. Now this playing works best if you're in an open tuning, but right now we'll just keep it in standard. Okay, let's see how it sounds. When we 
played like this with just one chord, it might sound a little messy, but I tell you, it has a purpose. Go and listen to Guitar Shio's music and you'll see why. All right, let's break it down. You gotta use your palm to create the bass drum like this. And you wanna use your index finger to do this. So, you go down with one beat. And you hit your fretboard like that. Now, this is where you gotta play close attention. You're gonna pull the strings up like that. And this is where it gets the name nail attack. I use short nails now, but if I had long nails, this would have sounded way more crystal clear. So you gotta keep your hand flat like that and then pull up. Let me play it slowly for you. Speed it up. Now I'm gonna count for you so you'll know when to hit the bass drum. We're gonna hit it on one. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Now, if that's really easy for you to do, here's another one you can try. I'm not gonna explain much to this one, I'm just gonna slow it down for you. So pay close attention. Got it? Bum, 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 da, ga, ba, bum. Bum, 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 da, ga, ba, bum. All right, let's move on. A great dexterity exercise is rolls and backwards rolls. So let me show you how I like to use rolls and backwards rolls to improve my speed. Now you can do this exercise with as many fingers as you want, but today we're just gonna focus on these three. This is how the exercise looks like. So let me slow that down for you. Starting with our thumb. So once you get it down, what I want you to do is keep increasing the speed. Now if you start making mistakes, decrease in speed, Get comfortable and then increase again. Now, backwards rolls. What is that? You guessed it. Exactly the same thing, just opposite. So this time, instead of starting with our thumb, we're gonna start with our middle finger. bit of tempo. The backwards rolls are a little bit more tricky than the normal rolls. And here I want you to do the same thing as you did with the normal rolls. Keep increasing in speed. If you start making mistakes, decrease in speed, get comfortable and then increase again. Now of course there are tons of ways that you can increase your speed. This one is just my personal favorite. All right, that is it for today, guys. If you found these exercises helpful, please give me a thumbs up. This was my personal top five favorite exercises for fingerstyle guitar. And don't forget to let me know down in the comments what you would like me to teach you in my future videos. So thank you so much for joining me for today's lesson. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with my weekly uploads. Until next time.